Hey YouTube, it's your boy Charm the Truckers Champ. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a fatal Norfolk Southern Railroad accident that happened in Cleveland about two weeks ago. This isn't the derailment that happened in East Palestine. This is a fatal accident that happened in Cleveland, okay? Uh, we're going to roll the intro, and then we're going to jump right into it. Stay tuned. The champ is here! The champ is here! The champ is here! Okay, so we're back. Um, before I get into this, just a, a disclaimer. It's going to be a fairly long disclaimer. Please just stick with me. It has to be long, okay? First off, first off and foremost, any pictures seen on this video, I did not take them myself. I simply pulled them off the internet, okay? Um, second, I do not and will not authorize this video to be used in any other way except for to watch on YouTube. So any emails or uh, phone calls or anything like that, I will not respond to. Please do not do that to me, okay? I and I'll let you guys know why here in a few minutes. Um, and uh, first, uh, we, we're going to pay our respects to the gentleman that lost his life in this incident. Okay? No disrespect to him his or his family at all whatsoever. Okay? Uh, I'm also not putting the blame on anybody or any company. I'm not pointing the blame in any direction. I am simply just saying what the news hasn't been saying because they probably don't know, okay? Um, so like I said, therefore, I do not authorize this video to be used in any other manner or fashion, okay? Uh, so with that out the way, we're going to jump right into it here. About two weeks ago, there was a Norfolk Southern Railroad fatal accident in Cleveland, right? Um... And what happened is uh, a train was coming down the tracks like normal and it had a person riding on one of the uh, cars. Now, he wasn't riding on the engine. The engine was actually, the, it was actually going in reverse, okay? So the cars were before the engine and he was doing what is called riding point. He was riding on one of the cars. So what they do is, when they get to a point in the track where they have to jump off and switch, he stops the train and he gets off of the train and he goes up and switches the track. And then he has the train go on by or he gets back on or whatever the case may be. And they continue on their way. Right. I've seen them do this plenty of times. And the reason that I can tell you guys a little more about this than what the news is telling you is because I've seen this same set of tracks multiple times like hundreds of times, literally hundreds of times, okay? Um, this set of tracks is really dangerous. It's about four or five set of tracks all within 40 to 20 yards of each other, okay? And it's on a dirt road. <laughs> so um, it's very dangerous. There are no gates that come down. There's only stop signs, okay? Um, and what happened was the train was coming down the track and... The news is calling it a dump truck, which, to be honest, these aren't the dump trucks that you see going down the highway. These things aren't even road legal, okay? These things are huge. Think of, you guys remember the old school, the, the Tonka trucks, the big Tonka trucks, like the dump truck version of the Tonka, tu Tonka trucks? It's basically that. These are dump trucks on steroids, okay? These things are huge. Like one of their tires, I'm five foot nine, one of their tires is taller than me, okay? So, um, he was, the operator was sitting in, it's actually called a Euclid or a Uke for short. Okay. He was sitting at the stop sign and this was about 1 AM. He was sitting at the stop sign and I guess he didn't see the train coming and he went to go and hit the train, but he hit it right where the gentleman was riding point. Okay. And that, unfortunately that gentleman lost his life. Um, now the one thing about these ukes that I think is a really big flaw in them, they have a huge blind spot on 
their right hand side or us drivers would call it the passenger side. It's a huge blind spot because basically they're sitting in a single cab. They're sitting in a cab that's only on the driver's side, okay? So kind of like a cockpit. You know, there's no passenger side. There's no passenger seat. It's just one seat sitting off on the left side. All they have over on this side is a mirror, okay? Now, about this set of tracks, like I said before, it's on a dirt road. And it used to be wide to where you could pull up and you could square up to the tracks. And you couldn't see all the way down the track still. But you could see a lot more than what you can now. And even me driving a day cab, it's a good thing I have the window in the back because I can actually look out the window and look further down the tracks. These ukes don't have that. They cannot see, they have that mirror to rely on. If they can't square all the way up, they have that mirror to rely on. That's it, okay? Um, so I guess he wasn't squared up enough to the tracks to where he couldn't see the train coming down the tracks. And he pulled out, but he hit the second car, I guess in between the first and the second car, right where uh, the gentleman was riding point at and unfortunately killed him. So that's exactly pretty much what happened there. Now, like I said, these tracks are dangerous. So say this is the set of tracks here, right? You have to approach it at an angle and you have to try to get squared. Look, you have to try to get squared up so you can see down these tracks. The only thing is these tracks kind of angled. They're actually kind of angled this way. So you you have to square up to them. Actually, you know, I was right the first time. They're angled this way. So you have to try to square up to them. But the road is narrow now because they actually added in more track right there. And when they did that, they didn't make the road back wide like it was. They made it actually narrow. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post a picture. Like I said, I did not take these pictures. Okay? These are pictures I pulled off the internet. Um, so... He could not, he actually did not square all the way up to the tracks, right? Um, and honestly, even me in a day cab, it's kind of hard for me to do it. And these things are bigger than my semi truck. They're taller and they're just, they're wider. But like I said, his cab ain't though. So uh, I, I have a hard time pointing the blame at anybody in this one, okay? Um, so you get, you get to that first set of tracks and you have to try to square up and you have to try to look as hard as you can. And I imagine it's a lot harder at night. I've actually crossed them at night, but it wasn't back then. The, the road was wider. You could square up more to them. Um, it's very dangerous. So you, you, you get to that first set of tracks and then you cross over and you have to stop at another set of tracks that you have to try to square up to. So you go across these ones right here, right? And then you have to go across, you have to swerve over, you have to get all the way over. Not, not to mention, there's a river off to your left-hand side, so you can't go over too far. And you go over these tracks and you have to, it's kind of like an S right here. You have to, and then try to square up again, like cut it sharp and square up again, right? So you can see down this other set of tracks. This other set of tracks coming off from the passenger side is straight, but coming off from the driver's side, it curves in, right? And then there's like a bridge with some tracks that come straight. So it's actually like two sets of tracks in one right here. They connect, they connect right there at that point. So you go over that set and then you go over and you're going to be bumping over about two or three more sets of tracks right there. Very, very dangerous. Okay. Now I'm going to show a picture here and, uh, you know, uh, if the family or any friends of this young man sees this, uh, it's it's not a picture of the accident itself. It's post-accident, okay? Okay, so as you can see right here, somebody took an aerial uh, photo of this using a drone or, or maybe a helicopter or something. Um, and this is the train right here. By the way, this looks pretty much like the one that derailed in East Palestine with the tanks and and this big Mad Max looking thing you see sitting here is the uke, okay? Like I said, this is a dump truck on steroids. 
And like I said, he looks like he hit the second car in right where the guy would be riding point on the ladder. Okay? Um, and there, you can't really see much of the tracks here, but I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's this is a dirt road right here, okay? Um, and <laughs> like I said, he can't, there's, it's hard for him to be able to square up right here, okay? It's hard for me to do it. I, I do do it somehow, some way. I don't know how exactly I do it, but I am able to get it done and to look safely down those tracks. I, and mainly it's because I have that window in the back. Um, even if it's dark or say that window got dirty because I was just coming off this dirt road, I'm leaning forward. I can lean forward. I could put it in, I could pull my brakes and actually go over to the passenger side and look out the window. Um, and I've actually, I've actually done that. Uh, so yeah, that's, this is the accident. I'm going to take this down. Now, this picture you see here, this is the youth. This is not where the, this is not the, the same one that was involved in the accident. This is in a different area, a different part of this area. Okay. And as you can see, this thing is huge. You see the trailer in the back. And I know some of you guys are gonna be like, well, the trailer's far back. You know, so it looks a lot smaller. Trust me, this thing dwarfs that trailer. Okay, even close up to it, it dwarfs that trailer. All right, that's how big these things are. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I I can't really say too much about it. Okay, so hold on. Okay, so like I was saying, I can't really go too much into it, but that's what the news doesn't know and can't really tell you is that that set of tracks itself is very dangerous. Now, this was not the conductor's fault by far. And, you know, me personally, when I think of conductor, I think of the guy driving the train. I'm not sure if conductor was his actual title or not, but that's what I'm just, just what I'm calling him, a conductor. Um, if this was not his fault by any stretch whatsoever. So... Um, rest in peace to that gentleman. And honestly, I've worked there so much. I might have seen the, both of these uh, people involved in this. I don't know for sure. Um, but uh, much respect to him. Rest in peace, my brother. And uh, hopefully these news outlets that are, a lot of news outlets aren't reporting this because it's, I don't know why. And the ones that are reporting it, they're getting the story wrong, okay? So hopefully these news outlets start retracting some of their titles and some of their headlines and actually start reporting it right. Um, hopefully uh, his family gets some kind of closure out of this. And to the young man that was uh, driving the uke, you know, hopefully you're not being too hard on yourself and beating yourself up. Accidents do happen. Hopefully you learn from this and can grow from this. But it's your boy, Charm the Truckers Champ. I got just signing out, man. Peace.